Hey everyone, I'm Matt. I'm Mark. Uh, and welcome to Brexastic 2024. Um, so today we're behind the scenes, um, having a look around before the show opens, we're actually displaying. So let's go and have a look around and see what we can see. and here's the first model and um, so we've got um, an Alan Ripper mosaic if any of you have watched Alien Aliens or any of the Alien films you'll recognize so played her. by Sigourney Weaver yeah and then we've got a, a massive xenomorph here that is just amazing and then at the bottom it's got one of the, uh, the pods with the face of it coming out of the pod and then if we move a bit to the right, we've got some of the, the ships and the armoured trucks. And then moving over to the right, if you just pan back out a bit, you can see LV-426, so the planet that they unfortunately land on where the aliens attack them. And th this um, model is amazing. Yes. And then if we go behind the scenes, you can see... I mean, I'm going to look, I'm going to sound insane. Uh, the Queen's Nest. If we have a zoom in on the platform uh, at the top, it, yes. you can see Just Ellen from the film. and Newt and the alien queen there getting ready to attack. So we're going to head over this way now. Um, obviously people are still setting up, so lots of talking going on, so you have to excuse the audio. So here we have some mechs that have been set up. I think the guy that's created these is called Jim Wilkinson, I believe. But these are impressive. They remind me a bit of Transformers. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. This is my favourite one. Yeah. Some I think this one and on the below. black one down there is brilliant. And then over here, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think these are Lego Elves. It's, uh, yeah, by the uh, Brick Bods. The Brick Bods. Yeah, brilliant. Not really so a set that you see very often. No, like some Pegasus flying around. Some flying dragons. And then up to uh, Doctor Who. So we're not, I'm not really a massive Doctor Who fan, but everyone I think knows the Daleks. It looks like they've got it in a timeline, so you go from the uh, 1960s, yeah. 1960s to 70s. 1970s. To the 80s. Oh, I really like this one. This is really cool. It's like, like an uh, armor. Oh, and a Land Rover. My favourite vehicles. Then we're into the 90s. That's brilliant. Some people who are Doctor Who fans may recognise some of these scenes. Unfortunately, me or Matthew don't. And then we've got Trevor's videos. Is that? So this looks like just uh, a modular street. Or maybe by uh, MNRK. Um, but like a modular street, pretty like a custom build at the end there. So it looks very similar to. Uh, it's like Cafe Corner, is yeah, it? Like a say, bit of a cafe corner. cafe corner. Yeah, with the hotel sign. And, and then stuff. this one looks like the detective's office. <clears throat> yeah, it does. A, it's like a bit of a mini and they look a bit smaller. Than I think they've changed. And that's like, like the, the bank, the brick yeah, bank. Brick bank. Yeah. Oh, I like this. It's a bit of like a central perk. Could use friends. Toy store. Figures out of these. Yeah, so that must be like a pizzeria. Yeah. yeah, that's really good. Oh, and then the monster truck. Oh, It's brilliant. It's got an audience at the back. Got an end. audience. And then it looks like the garage. Yeah. Yeah. Also got a wheelchair accessible section of the audience as well. The what, sorry? Wheelchair accessible. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool. Are these like um, Land Rover? Eh, Land Rover, Lego. Um, There's four of them that are the Lego ones the Altaro yeah. Loco, Grave Digger, and the two in the pits. Um, my little boy built that one, which is why it's on fire, because he insisted that it be on fire. 
so we've got two fire wardens coming across to sort that out. Oh, yeah. I made the Ice Planet one because that was my favourite space theme growing up. So oh, Ice Planet. Ice and Planet. I had to scale up the chainsaw because the, the little one apparently looked piddly, according to one of my friends. So oh, yeah. I went out to prove a point. And then there's these two, I've set a little challenge among my Apple friends. If you want to build a monster truck to come and play on the build, yeah. feel free. So Jules has done me the retro 80s style one. And then Will from the LNUR modified his Percy yesterday Percy, when yeah. he bought some wheels to go with it. And, then, <laughs> and that's on here now. That's, that's brilliant. Awesome. So he's got to change a career or hobby, depending on how you view it. I'm going to have to get a Star Wars one and stick it on. That's brilliant. But if there's any shows that we're up together, by all means, yeah. you're welcome to. Stick one on. Thanks very much. No, Thank you're welcome. You. Um, and then Mark is a massive Star Wars fan, but I'm not, but I absolutely love this. By Topic yeah, Bricks. Amazing. So, this is the Battle on Mustard Fire. It's what, Mark? Go on. Battle on Mustard Fire. So, Battle this is where Mustard Anakin and Obi Wan have the fight. Now, you'll, you'll notice that there is a few lightsabers on there, so they've depicted a couple of the, the, the fight scenes. I'm just going to stop there and introduce Leanne, one of the big organisers. Say hello, Good Leanne. Good morning. morning. She is fantastic uh, for organising this event, and we're very grateful to her and Kevin for putting this amazing event on. So, thank you very much, Leah. You're absolutely welcome. And, we're enjoying uh, thanks it. Thanks for coming. Yeah, brilliant. It's brilliant to have you. Right, we're going to carry on the tour while, while there's no one here. <laughs> Enjoy your coffee. You've earned it. Thank you very much for finding It's absolutely brilliant. I love these LED lights that have been used under the lava. I'm going to pinch his idea. I spoke to him yesterday. But it's, it's a brilliant idea. So we've got um, Anakin down here crawling up after he has the fight with Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan obviously has the high ground. Um, and then we've got another bit of the fight scene up here where they're on the side. I love the gold lightsabers. And yeah. then if we move over to the left, we've got the landing pad and it looks like Padme's been choked by Anakin, so she's passed out. R D D two. I know R D T two. But that's you by yeah. Uh, it's R two D two. R two D two. R two. Anyway, by Topper Breaks. Anyway, this is a brilliant, brilliant mock. This build, which is a collaboration build, uh, and they are looking for volunteers to join their build, but the detail on it is absolutely amazing. So, as I understand it, you build a cube that fits in. There we go. This is the cube you get to build. So you build this type of build, and then it gets slotted into the ginormous complex. And this is the new Hashima, the Euro, Sector 12 Euro Hub, the future, futurist metropolis. But it's a completely international build, so they're all the people that have contributed so far. But yeah, if you're interested, reach out to them. Um, yeah, very Ninjago-like. Um, but looks like maybe a little bit of a hospital landing pad there. But it's, it's very big. I was watching them build it on Friday and uh, we had to use ladders to build it. Brilliant. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Benny the Spaceman. Uh, yeah. okay. I, love, I love Spacemen. That's brilliant. On brand. Very on brand, yeah. And then I'm going to take you over here before it gets too busy because they've just opened the doors so the public are starting to come in. Um, but I want to show you this before it gets absolutely crowded. This is probably the world's best Jurassic Park layout. So we actually saw this at a previous show um, a few, uh, a couple of months ago, and I was blown away. But the level of detail is fantastic. So you've got the visitor center, the gates, the Ford Explorers. Um, the Jeep Sahara vehicles and then they've done a scene from every single Jurassic Park movie so uh, Jurassic Park 3 obviously in the bird cage there's the big pile of poo oh yeah big pile of poo from uh, Jurassic Park 1 you've got the boat from Jurassic Park 3 that they go down the river on at the end then we're moving on to Jurassic World here so can you see the uh, Indominus Rex coming through um, again from Jurassic World 1 where the, the pig escapes and the, the guy falls over the top and then you've got the, the raptors in there sticking out of their cage there 
to move over to here, it's more of a park. Now you can see the Motosaurus just bashing through the sea. Yeah, so the Motosaurus, this is actually from the original Lego Dinos, uh, Dinosaurs uh, theme. Uh, so great park usage. So it's not part of the Jurassic Park or Jurassic World sets. But it's brilliant. Sorry. And we've got Darren here, one of the creators. Oh. <laughs> and then John Hammond himself. <laughs> the other creator of this fantastic set. Some so this is by, this is the Jurassic Mock by the Collectors Emporium. If you want to have a look at on Instagram for them, we've got the DNA guy hiding in there, and then the visitor centre. So the visitor centre is huge. It's massive, like probably half a meter tall. But what a great build, part usage. And then. <clears throat> We've got from uh, Jurassic Park uh, Fallen Kingdom. No, is it uh, no Dominion? The last one. Uh, the house at the end. And then we've got uh, Jurassic. Uh, sorry, the Lost World. Um, and Jurassic, the Spinosaurus from Jurassic Park Three. So we've got the the RV going over the edge of the cliff here, and the two T Rexes going at it. And then we've got the High Hideaway. And then the uh, the fields where they run through and get eaten by the velociraptors. I'm not sure if you're able to see on camera, but there's a zip line going all the way down. Oh yeah, the zip line going across here. So that's from uh, Camp Cretaceous, uh, so the TV series. Um, and then we've got the old visitor. And then back to uh, Jurassic World One, where the Indominus Rex escapes from his confinement uh, and starts a rampage. So yeah, overall one of the best mocks I've ever seen in my life. Oh yeah, and just behind here, you can actually see inside the Jurassic Park 1 visitor centre. So, the dino lab, the control rooms, fantastic. So I'm going to take you over to uh, modified Star Wars sets. Yeah, so we've got some AT-ATs here, so... Um, these are the, the big 8080s, the, the UCS, uh, the big sets. Uh, these are epic, so they've modified them to be completely different. So this one looks like it's a butterfly. And then if we move to the next one, it looks like Sean the Sheep, I would suggest, maybe. And the next one, we've got a video camera, which reminds me of the, the Disney video camera that was made. We've got a TV, a cinema. Moving on, it looks like we've got some sort of monster one. Like an animal, it's got leaves on the back, leaves down the side. We've got some toes. And then this one looks like a made out of uh, some sort of trees and houses and vines. Looks like it's some sort of botanical gardens going on up there. Yeah. It's really Inside. cool. And then this I presume is the original? Except oh, half it's, the it's legs. Half it's built like a skeleton on the, on the far side. So that's the inside of the at And then moving on we've got an Octan truck. It's like a uh, like a pod racing like depot they've got like a pod racer up there in the theme of Formula, uh, one, car. Formula one and Octan type styles and then my particular favourite is the at with the dinosaur driving it I think that's fantastic with the dino um, spine and spikes on the top and yeah, a tail looks a bit like a stegosaurus oh, he's got he's got like Adidas trainers on if we have a look yeah. that's really cool and he's got some babies at the back and then the next one looks like it's from the uh, Lego Ideas Treehouse set. Yeah, they've taken the theme of the treehouse and turned it into an 8080. Looks like there's a turkey meal going on. Got some arches up there. And this next one is epic. So this is the giraffe 8080. So these have got some Duplo giraffes. Looks like we've got some giraffes in there. I'm not sure if you can see, but there's some um, plants and trees at the back, so a feeding area for them. That is epic. And then the final one, 
It looks like a bit of a steam, what do they call it? Steampunk. Steampunk theme. Yeah. So this is cool. Lots of gold and brown. Got a lot of um, packed minifigures in there, so feeding area, food, drinks, the party. Got a balloon on top. So they they're absolutely fantastic. Now this place is starting to get a bit busier, so hope you can hear us on the video because uh, the public are coming in. Um, but no Bricktastic would be complete without a visit to the very famous M and J's Fairground. So this is Mark and Judith. The effort and quality in this thing is amazing and Mark builds all these and, uh, and lights them up himself and there's Mark himself say hi Mark hi and Judith say hi Hello. <laughs> struggling I think with a bit with a bit with power how are we doing today Mark not doing so well, not doing so well. Four, power packs. four power packs so there's no power in this place in the middle of the hall we have to use battery for everything so running all these rides is a bit of a challenge but Absolutely fantastic. So this is a modified version of the original like fairground uh, spinner, um, but it's brilliant. This is one of my favourites. It's actually the first um, one of the first roller coaster rides I ever purchased myself. Um, but all these rides work, as you can see. This is his new one. This is Mark's new latest creation. Um, bit of a go kart track. That's on magnets underneath, by the way. No, no, it's got arms. Oh, right, he's got yeah, arms. Right. I told Mark he's there about the magnet idea. Yeah, so he's, he's, he's he's going to look into it. I think. But yeah, this is brilliant, yeah, so no, no trip to Bricktastic will be complete without the fairground. So we're going to start going, I'm going to take you over this side actually, and show you this thing, because I think this thing is absolutely epic. So, above, we have Wayne Manor, and I, I love architecture, this is a fantastic build, but underneath, even better, we've got the back cave. Now there's a screen at the back here, so I think they've set that up using maybe an, an old phone, an iPhone maybe. We've got some lights in the back, but the car got the, the Batmobile. The Batmobile there. Uh, this is how Lego should have done the Batcave. <laughs> uh, but it's look at the, the, the bats in the top. And, oh, we've got a bit of voice going on. Bit of audio. Um, we've got the boat down at the bottom there, if you can see. Just the level of detail. We've got the Batwing in the corner here. Go around that side, you can see the Batwing. So, an absolute fantastic build. Bit of a workshop on this side. But, absolutely brilliant. And then we're moving across, we're going from DC to Marvel. So on here we've got uh, the Infinity Gauntlet, the Hulk one and the Iron Man one. And Thanos is above. And then we've got the battle. So we've got Ant-Man's van, the time machine. And then we'll move across over here. So here we've got some builds from the Muppets. So this looks like Star Wars scene. We've got um, Chewbacca, Luke. C3PO R2D2 and Miss Pigger. And behind them. And then, yeah, on this rotating um, piece here, we've got Wednesday Adams and the Netflix show Wednesday. And then behind here, we've the got the bedroom that they share. We're all colourful on one side and all black and white on the other. This is epic. And then over here, we've got a Micropropolis. I think that's how you pronounce it, by Mark and James Coyle. Absolutely brilliant custom Lego creations, but look at the size of this thing. It is massive. Absolutely epic. Container ships, I love ships and boats and cars and trains. Bit of a cruise ship going on there. Airport over that side. But just the level of detail, number of trees, and is epic. It looks like some ideas taken maybe from the architecture sets and the docks. But absolutely fantastic. 
And as we head over to here, this is one of our fellow members of the Northern Britworks models, uh, Fiona, uh, Fee Wilmot. So there's her stack of all the shows she's done over the years. But I thought these are absolutely fantastic. Fishbowl. But this is amazing. It's like an aquarium, like a large fish tank. It's absolutely brilliant. And just down from the fish tank, all these huge Lego Technic trucks. And then anyone that knows me knows I am obsessed with Titanic. And this is absolutely amazing. So it's a, it's a cross section of the ship. And they've recreated the famous grand staircase. So up there you've got the dome at the top. And the clock at the back. So recreating every single deck of the Titanic coming down and then they're working on these two decks down here and you've got some well, let's say third class sleeping accommodation maybe and these are like the Turkish baths you've got the uh, I believe this is could be the second uh, no, the, sorry the purse office in here uh, so where you can store your valuables to keep them safe when you're on board. And as we come here, we've got a Dex and a lifeboat and Jack and Rose. Hopefully you can see that. And then the top of the ship. Same on this side, some officers having a cup of tea. But it's absolutely a fantastic build. So um, here shows the pictures of the inspiration. So these look like they've been possibly taken from Hope and Glory, the Titanic um, game or simulator that you can download. But it's absolutely a fantastic build. So I'm going to take you around here a bit further. So as well as um, displays and stuff, we have lots and lots of uh, different traders that are here. And yesterday, like the, the, the amount of amazing sets that these sellers had, um, particularly Graham and his sister. Um, the amount of retired sets and things like that that they had was just unbelievable. And they pretty much sold out yesterday. The stalls were actually empty and they brought a huge amount of stock. So a big shout out to, to everyone of the traders who have put effort into collecting all these all year for us. Um, now over here, this is an amazing build and actually one of my favorite. I'm a big Blacktron fan and these, are like, I'm um, gonna use a torch, you can actually see in. So these are like hangers. And if you just look at the attention to detail, so you've got the, some black trans ships going on, uh, like a mech there, um, a platform at the top here. But the build is just phenomenal. The size of it. And on top we've got a, a monorail, which is, I believe is a new addition, because I've not seen that over the last couple of years. Um, but it's a huge build. Blacktron ship. And here's the monorail that they've built in the Blacktron theme. And on this side, we've got some corridors of the station or the cave. This is a fantastic build. And then on this side, it's a bit of a, a landing pad. Which is absolutely just phenomenal. We've got lights, we've got some motion over there. Where this looks like a dish spinning. Um, absolutely fantastic. And they've actually purposely left it open so you can see in how they construct these. So it's absolutely a great Great layout. And then coming over to here, this gentleman on his phone is Matt Fonzie with his, say hi Matt, with his amazing Minecraft build that constantly just grows and grows and grows. I still say it's not done. You still say it's not done? I still say it's not done. It's not done, but I don't even feel like it's any good. It is brilliant. Uh, it's really good. 
Like, I, I love Minecraft. And, uh, you know, got some Minecraft trees. Harvest with the water going on here, so growing some food. Stables by the look of it. What a great use of the Minecraft sword, so the famous sword like, like, like from the Lego um, sets. Got some like Minecraft spiders and zombies and skeletons going on here, and a grave site. And then a church, so just the level of detail in that is just fantastic. So that's uh, Matt's Minecraft build. And then we'll head over here to a, um, a recreation of the Night of the Museum movies. So each of the movies has got a set. So we've got a large uh, Brachiosaurus skeleton there. But if you look at the attention to details on this build, it's just absolutely fantastic. And then you've got each of the, the scenes from the movie. It's absolutely brilliant. Hello, is this your creation? These two are mine, yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. I love it. I love the Night of the Museum one. Thank you. It's brilliant. I'm a big fan of that movie. And then this one from Lord of the Rings? Yep. Just absolutely fantastic. Just look at the attention to detail. Some trolls down there, and a dragon. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. A Mario Kart track going on here. And then someone has actually recreated the Queen Vic from EastEnders. Uh, our American fans, that is a, uh, a British sitcom. Um, uh, well, not sitcom, I should say, a British soap, in fact. Um, some of the episodes are a bit like a sitcom. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a soap from, based in London. And then moving on to that, this is a house from the Blitz. So, house on this side here that hasn't been demolished or burnt out. And then, on this side, one that's been bombed by the Germans uh, during World War II. <laughs> and then, as you can see, it's starting to fill up a bit now. Uh, but the level of build is just absolutely phenomenal. I'm just going to stop a second and just turn you on to this side, because throughout the weekend here at Bricktastic, they're actually building a ginormous mosaic. So this thing in the middle here is a mosaic that's been built by the public. So using designs here, you get a base plate and then you get a layout uh, that you have to create using the bricks uh, here. Um, and then you build it and then once you've built it, it gets slotted in to the mosaic design. And eventually it will fill this space, hopefully tomorrow, uh, today, and the picture will be complete. So some absolutely fantastic models. Uh, on this side, um, the famous great ball contraption, which you see at a lot of events. So each, each of these are usually modules built by individual people and they all get put together into a ginormous ball contraption that just runs throughout the day. And then I'm gonna head over to this side here because I've been wanting to actually see this set myself all weekend and it's a recreation of the Moss Espa um, pod racing circuit. And throughout the day, they actually have the pod racers here, 
racing around the track in front of the stadium. So I'm recreating it from the Phantom Menace. Um, but it's an absolutely fantastic idea. So they're using railway track underneath and then building it up to basically put the pod racers up above. Well, it's a fantastic idea. I'm hoping I'm able to see that run this weekend. And as we head over this side, we've got a ginormous build here. That is humongous. It must be, what, five feet tall, maybe? Um, by David Tabner. Well, that is just from, I'm not quite sure where the building is or where it's from, but just the build alone is extremely impressive. Uh, and on this side, actually, there's a bit of a fairground ride going on here. They've recreated Dodgems. Which is fantastic. Super impressive. Using some sort of chain mechanism over here with some big motors. What a great idea. And then this over here looks a bit like a shopping centre, to be honest, if I'm not wrong, not mistaken. So we've got City Pizza over there. Uh, different shops, so video game shop, uh, sort of travel agents, uh, movies, uh, toilets at the back, arcades, Lego store, obviously. Wouldn't be complete without a Lego store. And then some of my favourite builds of a weekend uh, at Lego shows are the trains. Just grab that, look at that. Absolutely amazing. Just the attention to detail, we've got a farm going on over here. Some pigs. Old ballast track. And we'll see that train coming around, that beautiful steam train. All the lights, everything, absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Starting to fill up a bit now. Over here we've got Crooks Hollow by Andy Wood. I love these things. People, everyone comes up with, usually with their own signs, please don't touch, I will make you walk the plank. So it's obviously pirate theme, pirate island. Again, it's a huge site, you know, a huge table. This is probably what, nearly two meters long probably by two meters. It's a big, big layout. Then we've got uh, what looks like a bit of like a, a tabletop games console. Yeah, pinball machine, in fact. Pinball machines, fantastic. And a great use of the grill, like the, the helicopter landing pad type pieces, using as a speaker grill. Pinball machines, more, more uh, arcade type games, funfair games. Uh, and then this little area here is actually used by Lego Masters. So throughout the weekend, they actually do events where they'll do uh, builds or speed builds or competitions that basically different people can take part in and that's um, presented over this side of the room. And then as we head down here, we've got some really great artwork. I mean, look at that 007 art, Lego art. With James Bond in the middle there. I'm a big James Bond fan. Favourite one is definitely Goldeneye with Pierce Brosnan as our James Bond back from the 1990s, for those people that remember. We've got some ice castle, like a frozen ice castle layout here. So Lego Castle is taking, making a big res, uh, resurgence recently um, with the sets that they're bringing out. Uh, and the marketplace is actually coming out very soon. I mean, look at that, look at that dragon. That is phenomenal. Even just finding all the, like, these types of bricks must be hard. That dragon's protecting his gold. 
if you're wondering where Mark's gone, he's actually gone back to our stand because we're displaying um, and there's obviously lots of people in now, so we have to keep an eye out, obviously, on the sets and meet and greet the public. Um, so that's where he's gone at the minute. We are actually based just over here and I'll take you around there shortly. Oh, and this is, a, this is brilliant. Oh, Lego Classic Space minifigs. I'm a big Classic Space fan. Are they like a recreation of the Space Baby type style or? Um, this was um, originally just doing this, but in, I was going to do it in Spaceman and then I built yeah. that instead, so I did it in Brickhead. Yeah, yeah, it's um, fantastic. It's amazing. It's just really just Benny, but I can't afford Benny because they're just <laughs> um, No, it's brilliant. And then we didn't have the, the little Space Babies. Bricks, so we had to make, to make it. To make it, yeah, yeah, yeah. The logos look fantastic. Great use of the hot dog. Yeah. We got all the classic spacemen over here. It's fantastic. I really like this, like, like an idea from like the Tales of the Space Age. Uh, yeah, so that's really our thing, taking someone that I, else's idea to an extreme. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. Yeah, and I love the brickheads. I wish Lego would do that as a set because I, I would. Like a, gold, a real gold. I would. Oh yeah, I didn't even see that. That is fantastic. <laughs> and we've got a little concert going on here next door. Yeah, that was, that was our first foray into um, this, because we realised we could do this set, but at miniature, so that's what... On the what stage, that is, yeah. It? So that's the Everyone is Awesome set for people who haven't seen that or don't have it. Um, I was telling my husband, he must build smaller. He said, what, you mean like this? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I believe this is a retiring set this year, so get it while you can, basically. Thank you very much. And then down this side, we're actually going to venture into some best of British, so we've got the crown jewels here. So we've got, um, I believe it's, um, That's the King's so, yeah, King's St. King's Edward's King's crown. Um, yeah, which is, is just phenomenal. We've got a hat that you see a lot of people in London wearing. Patriotic hats for special events. Another crown here. And then this one, I saw this, this, uh, this layout yesterday. Um, it's an homage to the Olympics from 2012 in London. So it uses the um, Lego... Um, tower bridge set um, but then um, all these different scenes have been added so we've got all the events with the horse horse trials uh, we've got Boris Johnson sliding down the zip wire uh, James Bond landing and coming in and the Queen so for those ones that haven't seen the opening ceremony these are all scenes from the scenes the golden rings and the red arrows the Olympics flame and James, uh, David Beckham like bringing the flame in over there. So absolutely fantastic. So uh, we've got a bit of a plaque there. So yeah, absolutely fantastic build. And then next to this amazing build is another amazing build by our friend Victoria. Give us a wave, Victoria. So she uses the large minifigs. What year were they out? Can you remember? 1994. 1994. Right, so these are the Belleville figs from the 90s. And they make absolutely perfect scale minifigs. So you can actually use larger pieces that you would normally use for say a window or a door here, and that's a window in here. So what would be a door in minifig world is a window in Belleville world. But we've got scenes from a normal house. I love the Henry the Hoover that's now a taxi the Hoover. Using the watch straps as curtains, absolutely great idea. And then this is a new addition, so I've seen this model a few times, but there's always something new. So this is the latest edition. We've got a garden now and a lawnmower. Lovely alarm box. Balcony with a sun lounger. Wish my house had a balcony. Someone decorating the loft up there. And everyone has rubbish in their loft, so Christmas decorations and boxes and suitcases. And then a nice pink kid's bedroom um, with bunk beds using, using windows as ladders. What an amazing idea. And then a shower curtain using the blue, trans blue um, bricks. So yeah, a fantastic build. And then what, this is the set that started it all, the 1950s diner. So there's always something going on here.
and there's a little snippet of Belleville and Victoria. So make sure you give Victoria a follow on Instagram. Thank you very much. Uh, huge brick pits everywhere, so these are dotted around the place so kids can come and play with Lego while they're here. Uh, but as you can see, it's starting to get a lot busier now. Yesterday it was heaving in here, so many people. Lots more sets down there, area for lunch, and we had a bit of a meal here last night, which was great. Uh, so really family friendly, uh, you know, everyone, everyone who's into Lego is welcome at these type of events. So we're going to head around here. Oh, this, this guy has brought all these from Hong Kong. So that is dedication. So I think he lives in the UK, but originally he brought all these trains and train station from Hong Kong. And this is the gentleman here. Very well, thank you very much. Just doing a quick tour of your amazing train station. And I love the clock tower. The clock tower is definitely my favorite part of the build on here. Still in Hong Kong. Yeah. But the main building and the platform Horse All gone. In 1978. Wow, that's fantastic. And I've got to show um, the Mickey train because the Mickey train is brilliant. Sure, something. Yeah. Because all can motorize and the doors can slide open. Just like this. Oh wow! Look at that. Oh. So the doors slide open. Mighty door, please. Do -do -do that's brilliant. And this is the first one. And uh, my son complain about it. Yeah. Hard to find button. And. Uh, Second version, open here, just like this. But I got the latest version here. You see, just put it inside and twist it. Right, okay, that's really good. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> so, you. great iteration between the first ones to the mid-range ones to the last one. And then this is my favorite train here, is the uh, M train from the Disneyland Resort. That's a really great build. Thank you very much. And then as we head down this side here, we've got recreations of the Thomas the Tank Engine engines. And then over here is my build. So my build is inspired by uh, the classic space themes, so multiple different themes of the 1990s. So these are the original adverts that I play in here from the 1990s, I've done some custom mocks. So we've got a communication center there, a biopod. We've got man landing on the moon over here. Um, and then different themes. So we've got Blacktron 2 over here. We've got a Blacktron 1 army invading. Uh, we've got Lego Spirius over his side uh, with their robots attacking the Unitrons. So these guys here, these are from uh, about 1994 um, and they came with the monorail and only the monorail was actually available in the UK uh, the rest of these sets here so like the ships and the different ships over there they were only available in the US so I've managed to source source those uh, and bring them here um, and then we've got some Lego future on over here with the flashing lights so yeah my homage to classic Lego sets and then on this side is Mark's Mark say hi Mark so I'm going to pass you over to Mark now, and he can talk uh, the last few minutes about his Mark. So here we go. So this is my Star Wars Tatooine Mark. I've took a bit of inspiration from Where's Wally, so I've done like a challenge for children and adults. Had a bit of fun trying to find different things inside, searching for mini kits if you've uh, played any of the Lego Star Wars games or the Lego games. I've dotted a few of them around and then there's just different minifigure stories so there's like a Tuscan Raider on a mobile phone Darth Vader just having a, a cocktail sat by the beach so we've got a, a Wookiee making cookies and then we've got a little Star Wars Jedi and Sith battle here and then we've got Luke Skywalker just cutting an ATST in half. So this is my display at Bricktastic this year. And then we've obviously got the Cantina set from the the official Lego set all in there. 
Yeah, that's mine. So, right now, I'm in the entrance to the Bricktastic area. So, down there is where you come in and with the big uh, Bugatti uh, parked up. And the first things you see are some fantastic, uh, super detailed Lego art. So, these look like they're inspired by portraits. Um, so, for example, this one here. People have tried to create the screen on this one. And then we've got some dot art by the look of Brick Tapestry for Brick Alley from Lilo and Stitch. The Lego Pirate from the Lego House. So me and Mark are going to Lego House uh, in March, so just over a month away. So we're going to get one of those pirates when we're there. Um, C-3PO and Benny the Blue Spaceman. Oh, it could be the classic version from the 1970s. I think that's Ahsoka. I'm not a massive Star Wars uh, aficionado, but there we go. One that's very patriotic for the UK. And the Demigorgon, this is really one of my favorite ones here. I think that looks absolutely brilliant from Stranger Things. And then once you've looked at the artwork over here, we head over to the LNUR train club. He's got a humongous display. Just look at this viaduct that they built. Absolutely brilliant, they always put on a great display, and in fact, they've got multiple displays here today. And then over in the far corner there, you've got another one of the brick pits, uh, just over there, um, with lots of bricks being spilt everywhere, because the kids are having fun. So here's another one of the um, train layouts from the LSUR. So I think one's northern, one's southern. Um, but absolutely fantastic this place. I love Lego trains. Let's just stop a minute and take a look at this steam train coming round. Absolutely love it. They're just so highly detailed. This gentleman's just working on getting another one going. Hopefully, yeah, there we go. Brilliant. And this one's got carriages as well, passenger carriages. And then on this side, we've got a huge Duplo display. And that's unusual for the Lego shows. You don't normally see um, Duplo displays. Um, but this is probably the biggest Duplo display I've ever seen. Well, the kids are loving it. So I spoke about earlier about um, some of the shops. Again, we've just jumped slightly in the video, um, but I just wanted to give you an, an idea of what the thing, type of things are on available. So at these types of events, they have quite a lot of retired sets. Um, so, and, and to be honest, this event has some really good prices. So we've got the Titanic set here on offer, down from 580, 590 in fact, down to 500 pounds, so that's a quite a really good deal. I actually have the Titanic set and I want to get two more to do uh, Titanic sister ships, uh, the Britannic and Olympic. And then we've got the UCS Imperial Star Destroyer here. Not very often you see these anymore, because uh, I believe they are retired. Again, uh, Mark is more of a Star Wars fan than I am, um, but I'm loving the Titanic set and I've just seen this. I think this is brilliant. That is fantastic. And another one on display here, definitely not one. I actually bought this yesterday, uh, one of these yesterday. Um, the Mercer actually came out in 2014, so it's been retired for about 10 years now. So another great set. Gunship down there. And then modular buildings, so they're really popular within the AFL community. 
Um, so we've got Assembly Square, got the Jazz Club. Uh, Assembly Square is, I, I, is pretty much retired now, uh, on for two four uh, two two four ninety nine, which is a good price. Uh, the bookshop that's retired as well. Um, Mos Eisley's Cantina, Mos Eisley Cantina, I should say. Um, so lots on offer, and they'll have Concord at the end. Um, so these these types of events are great to pick up retired sets. Um, at you know reasonable prices. I'd always recommend checking out the prices before you commit to buying at these places. Uh, but generally, you can get you know a pretty good price for a, a retired set, especially in new condition. Uh, over here, we've got the Bill Challenge, uh, where children and adults can come and have a go, and see if you can win the Bill Challenge, and you get a certificate at the end of it. Um, over here, this, this, young, this young gentleman here, he's actually a real Lego designer, so he's the dreams designer. Um, from come from Denmark to meet and greet with people, uh, sign autographs, have a chat with people. Uh, so that's really good. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm not a dreams um, fan. It's not one of my one of my themes that I follow personally. But so nice that um, the actual designers of the sets um, come and uh, come and meet the public. So yeah, great opportunity to to meet people that you wouldn't normally meet. So as you can see, the event is getting really busy now. So it is. Um, just gone half past 11 in the morning, um, so it's really busy again. So yesterday was the same, so this is day two of Bricktastic. And um, we didn't really video much yesterday because it was so busy uh, and we were, just, we were just on the go, continuous. Uh, so it is a, it is a very hard um, and tiring um, job, but well worth it. We've absolutely loved it. Um, we've been here uh, three days now, so we came on Friday, Friday afternoon, or uh, well, Friday evening, I should say, to set up. We were here till 9 p.m. Uh, we're here all day, you say, on day one of Bricktastic. Um, and then we've been here again since 8 o'clock this morning, on Sunday morning. And we'll be here till probably about 8 p.m. tonight, once we've packed up. So, this is just a quick brief tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, give us a thumbs up, give us a comment. Let us know if you've ever displayed at a LEGO show. And if you have, what you've displayed. And if you haven't, what would you like to display? Because it is open to absolutely everyone. If you've got the passion to build something, um, you know, even if you're just starting out in it, I would recommend join your local lug. So there's lots of lugs. This is Rebel Lug. So a lug is a Lego user group and is how you get into the Lego community to be able to show at events like this. So different ones, so there's Brick Labs. Me and Mark are a member of the Northern Brickworks. And we've got lots of our friends here today. Um, so I'd definitely recommend joining your local Lego user group. Uh, if you don't know what yours is, just get on Google, you know, search online, and you will find the one that's suitable for you. Uh, and then you can join them and get into a place like this. In fact, just before we go, I'm going to show you a quick model over here, which is done by fellow YouTuber uh, Joanna and her partner. So she's um, done a fantastic Lego castle display. Uh, and her YouTube is IT Toys. So yeah, she's done an absolutely fantastic castle display uh, and the level of detail is just amazing. The jester in there. Dungeons down here. But just look at the level of detail in the, in the model. So uh, give Joanna a, a follower on High Tea Toys because that is an absolutely amazing castle display. So that's pretty much it for uh, this year's Fantastic. I'm going to go back now and carry on enjoying uh, the day. Um, we'll just take one last look at the amazing Jurassic Park mock. Um, but if you have enjoyed this, please give us a thumbs up, uh, you know, give us a subscribe, uh, and let us know in the comments, as I say, if you've ever displayed at a show, and if, if so, what show and what did you display? And if you haven't, what would you display? Because the amount of variety here is just incredible. You know, something for everyone, um, from, you know, little kids to, you know, adults, teens, everyone in between has something that they may be interested in. Um, so as I say, give us a like, give us a comment, give us a subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.